optimizing your Android application performance has a lot to do with how you're managing your memory. And uh, more often than not, issues here can come from using collections that may not be frugal when it comes to this resource. My name is Colt McCandless, and to help you write more performant applications, the Android system provides a set of collections built especially for mobile development. Uh, consider the commonly used hash map object, uh, totally useful from a language perspective, but also a complete memory hawk. See, a uh, typical hash map system works a little something like this. Uh, you take in a key object and apply a hash to it, which gives you an index into a large array. At that index location, you place the value object, which means the biggest problem you have to design around is collisions, or rather when multiple keys hash to the same location in that array. Now, small arrays mean that you're gonna end up with a lot more hash collisions. I mean, mapping 20,000 objects to 10 locations is by definition going to get a little bit messy. As such, most hash maps end up allocating a large array in order to reduce the potential for collisions and then go about adding some other crazy logic in case those things do happen like uh, chaining algorithms and whatnot. So obviously this whole large array that's only sparsely populated thing isn't really ideal from the perspective of a memory minimal device, which is why the Android runtime provides an alternate container class which is more memory efficient, array map. Array map provides the identical functionality as a hash map but avoids all of its crazy overhead by using two small arrays instead of one large one. The uh, first array contains the hashes of the given keys in sorted order. The second array stores the key and value objects that have been inserted into the collection interwoven together according to the ordering of the sorted key array. When you want to fetch a value, we create a hash for the key and then binary search the hash array to find its index. Uh, we can use that index directly then to find the location in the key value pair in the interwoven array. Uh, now, if the uh, key in the second array isn't equal to the one that we submitted when we were searching for things, then we assume that there's been a collision. Uh, to resolve this, we then linearly walk the keys in both directions, trying to find the correct match. These uh, two things together mean that as the number of objects grows in our container, so does the time required to access a single object. Uh, basically, you're trading off smaller memory overhead for more expensive runtime access. Now, since these arrays are contiguous in memory, there's a few things to keep in mind with respect to their usage. Uh, dominantly is understanding how deleting and adding to the container works. Deleting elements can fall into two paths. Either you get lucky and only need a compaction step, which means uh, shifting the deleted item to the end and then uh, all the other values forward, or you can end up in the slowest path, which actually requires a resize and copy of the elements to eliminate the value in question. Insertions work on the other side of this coin. Uh, if the array has been compacted, then we can reuse those allocated blocks and then just shift around everything to keep our sorted order. However, the slow path here does require a complete resize of a contiguous array in order to make space, plus uh, copying and moving everything you know, on top of that. In general, this means that insertions and deletions from array maps are going to cost a little bit more from a performance perspective. But if you keep the number of objects in it small, like uh, in hundreds of items, then this really isn't anything to worry about. See, these small contiguous arrays mean that when the number of values is pretty low, you get a lot of savings versus the standard hash map. Uh, for empty maps, there's no allocations hanging around taking up space. And for small amounts of objects, it's pretty memory optimal. Oh, and uh, by the way, <laughs> another great feature of these containers is that you can iterate over them using indexing. Uh, compare that to the hash map container, which requires you to use the iterator pattern, which uh, of course is significantly slower and takes up more memory to do. But obviously it's not wise to use these optimized containers in every case, but there are some perfect situations that you should consider. Number one, Situations where you have a small number of items uh, in the hundreds or so with lots of accesses or the insertions and deletions are infrequent enough that the overhead of doing so isn't really noticed. Number two, situations where we have containers of maps like uh, maps of maps where the sub maps tend to have a low number of items and you're often iterating over them a lot of time. If your use case doesn't fall into either of those two buckets, then it might be best to stick with the hash map class, which actually highlights a very interesting point. Optimizing performance is a constant trade-off between finding the right container for the right usage pattern for the right memory pattern. And as someone said, there is no silver bullet, which is why you need to check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns content to get more information about these types of trade-offs. Oh, and uh, don't forget to join the Google Plus community as well to hear other war stories from developers who may be facing similar situations. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.